Hey guys, what's up? It's the Snake Dude 1814 here, and for this first video of the year, let's kick it off with a reptile room tour. So in this 12 by 12 by 18 exoterrarium filled with a bunch of fake plants and wood, we have Jazz the Crested Gecko. Her morph in particular, or should I say color variety, is a partial pinstripe Harlequin Crested Gecko. At the moment, she is chilling in the back against her background. That's where she likes to hide the most. She's just resting. She's definitely a very, very beautiful gecko. She's growing like a weed. She's probably pushing about six inches head to tail. She's definitely growing happy and healthy, eating her diet of Pangea gecko food. And she loves the uh, variety. What we do here is we offer her mixed flavors every time. So she either gets watermelon or banana, a bunch of different flavors of the Pangea. So it really is a good added benefit to her. So overall, she's doing quite well in this habitat. So in this 40 gallon Zoomed half top terrarium is Rocky the Bearded Dragon. So he is living life nice and happily. Uh, he eats like a champ, greens, insects, really pretty much anything that is off of tweezers, he will destroy. He has a very nice 30 inch Zilla Pro Soul fixture with a timer built into it. So it controls all of his heat and UVB lighting, gives him a nice hot basking spot of about 110 degrees. And pretty much he's just doing what every bearded dragon does. Sit, relax, and make an awesome reptile companion. So, over in this 10 gallon terrarium, we have my two Madagascar hissing cockroaches. And I'm not going to take them out and put them on my hands right now because they are sleeping. But if you checked out one of my last videos where I did an unboxing, not only did I reveal these two that I picked up from Sewer Fest, but I also received 50 babies from an awesome channel called Indiana Herps and Invertebrates. So, I will leave a link to his channel down in the description below. But pretty much these guys are doing great. They eat all sorts of leftover vegetable matter. Pretty much I get food for my dubia roach colony, which are my feeder roaches. And small bits of leftovers go to these guys. So they are really an awesome insect. I like them a lot. And they are great for educational shows to really get people correct knowledge on insects. Because not all cockroaches are filthy animals. These guys are actually pretty clean. Now inside this 40 gallon Zilla front opening terrarium, we have Vegas, my male Carolina corn snake. In past videos, I referred to him as an Okati. However, I was mistaken after doing some further research. So he is in fact a standard Carolina corn snake. So here is Vegas in all his glory. As you can see, he's got the typical corn snake coloration, bright red and orange, truly a beautiful snake. Uh, with, of course, the black saddle marks down his back. So he's definitely a lovely guy. One thing that I will say is that all of my snakes are kept with UVB. I do often catch Vegas basking in and around this area, right under his UV lamp and basking bowl. So they do make use of the UVB rays, and I think overall it leads to a much happier and healthier snake. Right below Vegas, in this small little critter keeper, is home to a baby corn snake. For any of my longtime subscribers, you will know that I've had this corn snake in the past. It is actually a little baby fire morph. So originally, I thought it was an albino. The difference is it keeps getting oranger and oranger with each shed, and the characteristics no longer looked to be that of a typical albino snake. I later found out that this is in fact a fire morph. Pretty much what the fire morph in a corn snake is, is that the parents are albino and have the hypomelanistic trait meaning when this snake is an adult it will be a solid orange color it really is a beautiful animal i believe it is a female and as you can see she's growing she's eating fuzzy mice at the moment with no problem whatsoever and she really is enjoying life I know I mentioned earlier that all of the snakes are on UVB. The reason this one is not on UVB is because albinos are very sensitive to light and UVB radiation can burn them due to their lack of black pigmentation. Now again too, this one is rather young so it is still growing out in this tub. I like to stick with tubs for baby snakes because it prevents them from escaping easily as they would in a glass terrarium. But overall, she is a beautiful snake, and she's going to keep getting more beautiful every year. Up next in this 40-gallon Zilla critter cage is home to my other normal corn snake, 
Hash. Now, Hash here is the sibling to Vegas, and unlike Vegas, he actually has a more of a brownish color. He is still a classic Carolina morph corn snake, just like Vegas. However, he is also a genetic runt, so he physically looks smaller. Hash has definitely been through a lot in his life. He actually has escaped in my car once during a show, so definitely be sure to check out the tag there if you want to find out how I found him, but it was definitely quite an interesting event. Just like his brother Vegas, I keep him with UVB. The only difference is that his fixture is another pro soul like Rocky the Bearded Dragons, and therefore he has full UVB coverage due to the fact that his screen allows for it. Hash in general is an awesome snake and he's probably the most favorite reptile in my collection. He just is loaded with personality. When it comes to a fan favorite out of my entire reptile collection, there is no other than Harriet, my Chinese water dragon. You guys just love her and she truly is an amazing animal. She's got a giant habitat to suit her needs, which is what these animals do require. She's currently basking at the moment, but as you can see, she's just stretched out enjoying herself, doing what a water dragon does. Her setup dimensions in itself are four feet wide, or long, should I say. Then it goes back about two feet, and it stands exactly five feet tall, giving her plenty of climbing room to suit her semi-arboreal needs. Her water section will be getting updated quite shortly, as not only do I have a heater in it at the moment to keep the water from getting too cold in the winter, as the bottom of her tank is right next to an air vent, but it will also be getting a filter soon to make it so the water stays fresher longer and saving me a little bit of time when it comes to reptile maintenance. She's great at shows, she's great with people, she truly is a one in a million lizard, especially considering her species, water dragons in general, are known for being highly skittish and more of a display animal like a chameleon. She really is an awesome lizard and I am thankful for her every minute I have her. So last, but certainly not least in the Reptile Room Tour has to be Zilla, the Argentine black and white tegu. As you know, I watch her about twice a year, so she is not my animal. However, I like to feature her in my videos as I do a lot of taming work with her. And overall, too, she's just a lovely little lizard. What I find interesting is that even though she is a black and white tegu, she does have a little bit more white than black, so I think it really gives her a nice, unique look compared to other tegus. But she eats like a champ. She's active. She does a lot of healthy typical tegu things She is a little bit small for her age. We are working on that The main issue that I've noticed is that we're not trying to feed her turkey or lots of Animal body parts. We try to stick with whole prey items like insects and feeder mice to an extent She's taming down. She still has work to do, but that is a little update on her expect more videos of her in the future though so overall guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, definitely leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I've got a cool collection and I try to get videos uploaded once a week on amazing reptiles and amphibians. And until then guys, this has been the Snake Dude 1814 and I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.